my name is Matthias Gude. I'm technical consultant at Detaricon Digital Custom Solutions in the area of business IT management. The main emphasis of my area of responsibility is the creation and development of customer-specific enterprise architecture solution and the translation of this solution in real-world uh, technology products with support of our technology partners. And now, enjoy our webinar. I warmly welcome everyone to our webinar today. My name is Matthias Gude and I'm being your presenter today. Uh, the title of this webinar is Codeworks Data-Driven Interface Management via Linux and SAP NetWeaver PIPO. And let's get started. So again, I'm your referent for today. Uh, my name is Matthias Gude. I work as a consultant in the business area, business IT management at Titanicon. Um, and before we start with the topic of this webinar today, I will give you some information about our company. And we start with the um, where we actually come from and where we have gone to, where we're actually going to. So, uh, Estarian Detail Con Journey started 2006, so more than 13 years ago, with the scope of integrating processes by means of ESP platforms, which was the early days of SIO landscaping at this time of point of time. Um, of course, back then we need to have a clear understanding of the functional part of the service concept. But for insiders, we had an image of being outstanding technology integrators, especially for the SAP part of the enterprise IT. And even nowadays, we actually have a lot of experts and integration experts, and actually also the name experts in the area of SAP, S4C, like especially in S4HANA and Z4HANA and cloud platforms. But back then, so like back, back to 2006 till 2009, our clients at this time were big enterprises with a huge application, application landscape, IT landscape, for example, Siemens, Volkswagen, or Eon. Uh, and some of our clients said to us that you made actually proof that you're capable of integrating all the processes in an end to end approach. Then, of course, you also should be able to think more in this horizontal matter across the whole business. So about the domain landscape, about the application landscape, technology landscape. And they asked, they came to us and asked God, could you maybe imagine that you help us to create transparency about the transform of our and to transform our landscape? Um, based on this, um, this demand actually, we the business IT management had actually been founded at the Caraton, uh, the business unit. And there we actually focus on really on enterprise architecture management uh, in, for, in terms of the application technology portfolio, on capability management, and we support these concepts with tools, with tooling. Uh, in this today, we actually present one of those tools, which is actually LinaX. And now again, some days later, we actually took the next step, with, uh, which is pretty straightforward. We are capable of integrating the processes about all prep platform preferences for SAP. So SAP is still like one of our main uh, field of actions. And we are capable of transforming the landscape, which required several years of knowledge and shaping application platforms in order to implement the complete solutions. And that's actually where we earned our scores in designing, implementing integrated solutions to customers and that line chain processes uh, they are mainly based, as you see, come to let's to nowadays, based on the S4 HANA, C4 HANA, but also on other like uh, platform as a service um, systems as uh, the AWS, uh, so the Amazon Web Services, or Microsoft Azure. And this is actually well, where we can say welcome to the presence. No, we are like a process focused, architecture driven and technology experienced um, company. So that's actually our both CEOs, Martin Manitschke and Jörg Atay-Nolke, whereas actually Jörg Atay-Nolke is more like the head in the area of business IT management. We actually have this broad look on, that, on this matter and we have uh, the visions for actually developing the, the uh, business unit. Uh, give me some facts about the uh, our company. We have done five, uh, the year 2018, so, so last year, 
We have then 85 customer projects, mainly in the DAC region, so Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, which actually have a turnover of 9.5 million euro. Uh, we have 30 customers in different yeah, areas, around about 106 employees. Our technology partners are SAP, of course, if Software AG, and of course, LinaX with their tool, LinaX. And we have in total more than 560 person years of experience in IT consulting. So what is the structure of our company? We like this overarching business unit, business IT management, which focus really on the enterprise architecture, man, on project portfolio management, on the application management, facilitated by Alphabet, Linux, the both enterprise tools that are, that we are supporting. Then we have a customer engagement solution team, which focus on the work of SQL HANA, so marketing and sales service. They really do go deep into the customer journey, focus on the relevant touch points of their customers, of the customers, of the customers, and help to actually leverage like potentials, like um, marketing and sales potentials for our customers. We have the supply chain solution experts which are more focused on the more classic supply chain processes, support of the side chain processes with S4 HANA, like procurement, production, distribution, warehousing, and ARP. On the right side, we have the level up in services, which kind of supporting services, which helps, helps us to develop a small technical solution that enhance the functionality of the, actually, the vendor tools that we support and actually also was the main part in developing the um, um, the technical solution for the data-driven um, lifecycle management I will show you today. And on the bottom line, we have our integration service, which have, this are the bottom line of this whole, which is like focus on integration architecture, SAP integration, IBM integration, on APA management and SAP cloud platforms. And if we have to take a close look, that's actually where we go. Where we have the knowledge about uh, enterprise architecture and application management, interface management. And we also have the knowledge on the bottom. Like I say, we know that how we have the experts who really work on interface integrations uh, in companies. So we actually more or less connect this world. And that's what I show you today the connection that we actually created. So, but to give you more an idea what we have done, I will have a, we have a use case, which is this message control during the ERP transformation, which have been a real world use case. We actually um, executed and uh, not executed, but actually have been done in a customer project. And yeah. So, and for example, for this customer, it was like um, that the living omnichannel outlet, for example, the warehouse, the marketing sales, and distribution of products across our channels, um, enterprise experience complexity on the controlling message on recipient, like invoices, order confirmation, and delivery notes, like data objects or like business objects. And actually, actually, an actual, actually, an optimized message control which uses unnecessary handling of ports and sales and distribution departments used to keep predisposition for faulty transaction and, and identifies last and potential for full, full business IT landscape. Or it's more like general information about this use case, but gets more deep into it what we really, what's the circumstances uh, at the customers at, back at the point, back at this time. So what was the situation? Is this situation, our customer has a non, not documented Microsoft ERP landscape. And as such, he was to actually completely replace this uh, landscape by S4 HANA and maintaining all the central Mesa data objects in SAP S4 HANA. Supported by several consulting firms, they actually created all the into, to be integration scenarios within the sub PIPO, which actually is really important. And at this, but it was not really happy. This one was not really happy about the the actually the uh, solution uh, that they, at the end. So the the point we came into uh, the project, and our job was to verify these to be integration scenarios by interviewing the concerned business departments and updating the PIPO. 
with the occurring changes and to enable an accurate message control during the ERP transformation. And the key pain point in S4 handle project was like order to cache process, where the data for problems was causing all the time because of inefficiencies, inefficiencies in the business and IT departments. So what we actually want to do, we want to identify, or like the SAP team actually want to identify this problem causes in order to derive the right measures to fix this the measures, to fix this data flow problems by analyzing the S is message flows. So what did we do? We used the PIPO connector, just like our technic solution for, for the data drift interface management, which I'll show you, we'll come later to this. And to create an end-to-end -end transparency over SNT integrations in OS and Linux. So the approach was actually creating the transparency over the SS data flows, about message types, message controls, output control. Uh, then next was the definition of solution concepts for the to be message flows, and analyze and describe the optimization potentials of this, of the whole business IT landscape. And uh, now we actually don't worry about that. And actually step more like step forward. We have here the point we have done is we actually use our connector to upload the data from the PI, which actually was stored there into the Linux, which Linux is an enterprise architect repository tool. So it, it helps us to actually store and visualize our enterprise architecture, or enterprise in terms of the business and the IT. And one concept is actually interface. And that's what we see, see here. What you see here is like an interface map, interface landscape. And with this interface circle map, for example, we were able to to analyze this master data flows. What we see here is actually the same shown in German, but what you see here is the flow of um, maturity master data. And we actually really easy to see, uh, really easily to see which. Uh, We actually really easy to see the supported business capabilities if maintained in the Linux. Uh, more about this later. But let's get that uh, forward. Uh, let's stay here. We see that the main what we see in this uh, visualization is that where the material master data are created and maintained with an S4 HANA, which is like yeah north. And transfer to C4 HANA PCM on the left side. It's like the green way. So this information gets transferred to C4 HANA. And in C4 HANA, what you actually not seen here, but we actually know from the uh, project was this S and S4 HANA PCM uh, additional necessary product information has been added to the material master data. And a new ID has been created for this data object. Uh, and then this information are going to transfer to all other data or to other application we see here is like some of them SAP applications like C4 HANA Commerce and some other non-SAP application like retail or center B2B, BI B2C or a B2B web shop. Uh, they're actually using this information. So at line we're actually finding that the center B2B application, which is actually the one in the uh, yeah left corner, left down corner, left lower corner is that uh, the received material master data is not only from the PCM, so the enriched data information, and also data from the S4 HANA. Uh, this may be a hide for inconsistencies, yeah? because the PCM creates the ID for the product containing it, the master data. Uh, this ID may be differ uh, from the ID in S4 HANA master data center, B2B. So it's received directly. So we cannot say if there's really an inconsistency from here, but this is an indication that we have now, okay, we have to do further investigation to actually find out if there are any inconsistency in this uh, in this landscape. Okay, another short example here we have done is uh, GDPR. So of course, GDPR and not only since GDPR is, is, is there and it's still like an open topic for a lot of companies. Um, it could be, or it's actually interesting uh, to know which communication relationships are realized, for example, by HTTP. So without the S, we know it's not actually a risky communication protocol. And by using the filter in Linux, which is on the top, top uh, on the uh, here on the uh, menu bar on the top, 
I see that actually we filter to our SOAP to HTTP connections. And I see at one glance that there may be three interesting data flows that maybe are should be further analyzed. I remember then actually have a look on which information objects or data objects are burned. So we see that here actually on this info from HANA, as well HANA transfers data to BI, B2B, and Zender B2B, which actually are customer based data. And this information actually um, transferred by HGB. And again, all this data is not maintained manual, all this data is directly stored within the SAP PPI IPO. And we only use this uh, in the Lina X. Okay, so there were actually use case we worked on. Let me go a little bit, now we go deeper into the, I'll do like we deep dive in our PI, on our PIX, the SAP PI Lina X connector. And I'll show you how it works. So first up with our technical solution. So that's actually the technical architecture for our connector. We actually connect Linux and the SAP PI. So on the left hand side, we see SAP PI and we actually use different protocols to actually uh, uh, catch data from the PI, which is in the integrated configuration service, the communication channel service and simple queries. In the middle, do actually host our connector within a Docker container within the Amazon Web Service, within the Amazon Web Service, uh, Amazon Cloud. And this actually, this connector on a scheduled base or like on an ad hoc base, catches the data from the BI, transforms this data and sends this data to Linux. So maps this data to the Linux meta model. And it's actually an overview of the data we catch from, uh, the, from the SAP. So like the enterprise is provided consumer, provided consumer information, the namespace, the technology, the direction of the interfaces, and also the type of the type is synchronous or asynchronous. And with Linux, we have the possibility to actually um, extend or en enhance the information with further like enterprise information, like data object is transferred, transferred, which, yeah, which we actually which I want to actually also be uh, maintained automatically. But at the moment, we actually still manually need to more, uh, to actually maintain this information within, uh, within Linux. Okay, let me give you a live demo of how this all works. And therefore, we start with Linux. Now we jump within the application, we go with to Linux and we start on the dashboard level. And I will not do a deep dive on Linux here, but give you some sh short information about the Linux solution. So we have a dashboard, we do have an inventory. This inventory contains all the enterprise architecture information we have stored in there, which actually are capabilities, processes, applications, interfaces, or data objects, and a few more. And we do have a lot of filter possibilities here. And we do have enhanced reporting functionality. So this actually supports us and uh, do really, really important uh, reporting work in the enterprise architecture field, like here, like uh, an application landscape based on the capabilities on the business capabilities we do in a company. Yeah. And we do have like this dashboard function. It gives us a few information about our uh, repository. So latest updates, subscribe fact sheets, and important to do for you. So my to do for you is actually to show you in webinar uh, interface, which actually have been imported by the SAP PI connector, PIX. So we do have, uh, which is called the restructure. So we have in this uh, interface we see here has been imported by the PI, it's actually an orphan which often means that this has actually, the uh, the applications have no representation within uh, Lina X yet. So they have been, not only the interface has been created and also the application that connect the, in, that the interface connect. And we have here some basic information. We have the name, which actually is a combination of the namespace and some other information. And this actually can be changed. Uh, we can actually go in here, change the name to a more human readable version. Um, we do have external ID, which actually not be changed because we need that for mapping the uh, this data entry to the data entry PI. And we have a description. We have our interface with our application. We have an interface provider and a consumer. And we have do have an MIT component. And this component consists of the um, 
technology it actually used to transfer the data. So in this case, it's actually a transformation from GDBZ to SOAP, and it's actually using HTTP. Okay. Next, we're going to switch to DPI. So I actually also went to DPI. We do have here on the creation configuration, integrated configuration, and there we have these representation with the PI, which actually is called the Ausbildung, Client Ausbildung SIPB structure. And there we see we do have an adapter type here, which actually is so. And this is actually the one we have seen just late, just in the Linux so soap here on this side. If you go to the inbound processing, we see it's shady. See? Yeah. But outbound is actually soap and HTTP. Now we don't see this information here. But what I do next is actually I go to change this information. Now I go in here. And I prepared actually showcase uh, Linux communication channel. So now we see the adapter type has switched to mail. I'm going to save this change. And then I need to also activate this change, otherwise, it's not going to be transferred. And that actually has changed. And now we go where the magic is happening. So we're going to our PIX to the PI. Pix SP SAP PI Linux integrator. And we see there's no sketchy status, it actually turned off. The last run servers was a success. And here we have actually the possibility to edit our configuration, actually to set the configuration for the connection to the yeah, to SAP and Linux. We can actually define a schedule. Oh. Sorry, I need to relock. You can actually decide a schedule like on a based on a clone expression. Uh, right now, here's nothing scheduled. And we have the possibility to actually monitor. Uh, I see actually a log files of the of the uh, runs. And actually, what you see, I've changed the information within the PI and I do run now. Oh, and just reload. I see now the run status is running. And I go to monitoring again. And open running, and I see nothing, not much happened yet. And I see now, I can see now he's actually fetching the first interfaces from the PI and going to uh, transform the data, which actually happens right later, and transfers this data to the Linux. And if he's like, this could happen on a scheduled base, but also actually could be doing on the ad hoc base version. Actually, I want to have done right here. I just that done an ad hoc run of the PI connector. Okay, it still needs a little bit of time to run, so yeah, but maybe our change or has been already set in uh, Linux. I you see here now it has changed. Yeah, now JDBC and mail before it was. JDBC and SOAP and HTTP. No, it's actually JDBC, then to mail and an IMF4 protocol. Yes. And we can also go to reporting uh, to our, you know, show the interface map, sorry, interface circle map. And see all the information actually, which are within the Linux. And I'm going to actually further. Uh, Filter the information to only the information that has been imported by our, uh, yeah, by the PI, and also all the uh, and interfaces that actually exist here uh, within the uh, PI. We've actually modeled in the PI, and yeah, now we'll be able to analyze them uh, according to different information, or actually can also extend the information with further information, for example, the data object. Okay, let me switch back to our presentation. Uh, yes. Okay, that was actually the live demo of how we actually change the protocol type and actually, uh, yeah, push this transformation to or this change. Actually, we push the change to. Lean IX. So what's the vision? Uh, vision, because that's not the end or like the final version of our uh, 
connect actually want to keep on working on this and actually extend the functionality in the next uh, vision we actually have is to actually do it in data driven interface lifecycle management and what this could actually look like this so we know that we have these within the sap we also have the monitoring data we have the logging functionality so we know when an, if, a, like, if an, an interface is going to be executed a log file is created with information of the interface uh, here example the information or the message has been sent via this interface so the idea actually to use this information to actually define interface life cycles so for example we have seen here the first time is then business partner so black ben in november and november 2018 this uh, interface maybe has been created in the sapi so at the moment it's going to be created it's actually set to a plan status with linux uh, in the moment it's going to be sent the first messages and first data this actually this info actually the information gets updated within linux and this uh, and the um and the interface is going to be set to active and maybe also the other way around. So we see this then creditor interface. This interface has been active since, yeah, we're gonna say when it actually started, but we can say this has been active until February 19. And in March 19, there was no more messages sent via this creditor uh, interface. So we can say, okay, this maybe have stopped. So we can set the interface life cycle to, to uh, end of life. Well, it's not active anymore it's the end of life so then we have we would have within linux all at the time like real-time data real-time data driven information from the can say real world from the real uh, executing of the um, uh, interfaces so that's actually vision i'm really looking for like also partner to actually make this vision become reality so if you'd be interested just you know, Feel free to contact us or contact our uh, uh, customer support. Uh, okay, and that's actually the end of our webinar for today. I'm happy that you have been with me to this webinar. I hope you find it helpful and interesting and gave you some really valuable knowledge um, about also, yes, um, how interface management can be done in a data driven manner. And uh, I wish you. A uh, nice day, and I hope we uh, hear each other again. Yeah.